Hello and welcome to this screencast on basic data plotting in MATLAB. In this screencast, we're going to review how the plot function works for mathematical functions and then apply that process for plotting data. We're also going to learn a little bit about how to properly format a data plot and then how to use arrays and the things that we've learned in the array manipulation screencast to make plots from arrays. So there's more than one way to plot data in MATLAB, but we're going to try to keep it simple and use the basic plot command that we saw earlier for plotting mathematical functions. Let's review how that function works. First of all, I have to, if I were going to say plot the graph of y equals x squared, I'd first have to create a vector for inputs, for example, x equal 1, 0 0.5 to 10, and that would give me a, a uh, vector of x values from 1 to 10, uh, skipping by 0.5. And then I would have to define a vector for outputs using a function, say y equals x squared. So again, what I've done is I've created two vectors that have the same length. You see over there in the workspace, they're 19 entries long. And then I would simply plot my x and my y. So we all know how that works. There's no reason, though, why I can't make those x and y vectors manually instead of using functions, though. And that's the heart of how I can use the plot command to plot data. So I'm going to go over here to Wikipedia, and I have the Wikipedia page for Johnson County, Indiana, where I'm currently located. And at the bottom of this Wikipedia page are some data from the Census Bureau from 1830 all the way to the present. Let's suppose I wanted to make a time series plot where I'm plotting the population of Johnson County from 1950 to 2010. Well, this is another instance where I have inputs and outputs. I'm just merely going to create the vectors by hand instead of using a function to make them for me. So my inputs are going to go from 1950 to 2010. Let's go over here to MATLAB and do that. We'll call it year, and 1950 to 2010, and I'm skipping by 10 years each. So that would be my vector for inputs. And now my vector for outputs, that doesn't follow a mathematical function, so I'm just going to enter that in manually. Move this over here and scroll down. And I'll simply enter in those uh, population values by hand. I'll call it pop. And 1950 was 26,183, then 43,704. The principle behind what I'm doing here is the same as when I was using mathematical functions. It's just that I don't have a mathematical function to work with. I'm just going to enter in a vector for outputs that is, of course, the same length as the vector for inputs. 115,209. And then finally, most recent census data, 139,654. I see that I do have seven columns in each, and so that's good. I wouldn't be able to plot these if I didn't have that. So now I can just simply type plot, just like I did before, and put the inputs, which is year, and the outputs, which is population. And when I do that, I'm going to get a nice little line graph right here. So I've mentioned before that vectors in MATLAB, you can think of them as like rows of spreadsheets. And that's really what we've done here. I've created a, a row or a column of X data and a row or column of Y data in a sort of spreadsheet and just using MATLAB to plot one column of the data on one axis and the other column on the other axis. So there's really no difference between using the plot command for functions or for data. It's just that we have to enter in things manually sometimes for the data. Now a word about formatting plots here. This is a perfectly okay line plot, but for observed values like census data, we typically don't use continuous lines like this. So I'm going to go back and change the plot here and include some plot options that make this look a little bit better. When I am graphing observed data like these seven data points, I typically use just markers to represent the data on the graph rather than a straight line. So I'm going to go back and replot this and say make it a dashed line with blue squares. And when I do that, I have something that looks a little bit more like a data plot. These little blue squares are the actual observed data, and the lines are just there to show basically a trend. And I can go back in and add some more uh, options here. For example, a title would be a good idea, Johnson County Population, and so on. Let's look at another example of plotting data, this time with a little bit more complicated format of my data. Over here in the spreadsheet, I have a uh, collection of data that shows the attendance for the 1989-1990 season of the National Basketball Association, along with the ticket prices for each market. I think I would like to make a, make a data plot that has attendance on the horizontal axis and price on the vertical axis. So I'm plotting price versus attendance to see if there's any sort of uh, visual relationship between price and attendance. Now, to do this, I'm going to invoke a few things that we've learned in previous screencasts. First of all, I'm going to create a MATLAB variable that contains these two columns of data. I'm going to go over here to my workspace, click on new variable, and let's just call this NBA. Right now it has nothing in it. I'm going to double click though, 
and bring up the editor and I'll go back over to my spreadsheet and just copy out only the numerical data that I have here. Copy. Go to my MATLAB editor, paste the Excel data in. And just to scroll down, I see that uh, these two vectors have the same length. So I'm going to close this out. And now I see MBA is a 27 by 2 matrix. It's an array. Now let's try to create our data plot. We're going to go over here and remember I wanted to have attendance on the x-axis, the horizontal axis, and price on the y-axis. So I'm going to do all this in an M file to have a little bit more control over what I'm doing. Now attendance is the first column of my MBA variable. So I'm just going to create a, a separate variable for this called attendance. And I'm just going to set it equal to the first column of NBA. And remember from the array manipulation screencast, that is NBA parenthesis colon comma one. Just strip out the first column of the NBA matrix there. And price is the second column, NBA colon two. I'm putting semicolons at the end because I don't want those vectors to echo back to the screen once I strip them out. Now I'm just simply going to plot attendance versus price. And now when I say, when I run this, it's going to ask me to save it. I'm just call it MBA test or MBA plot is better. And when I get the uh, plot up here, it's going to look like kind of a mess uh, because these are all disjointed points that are not necessarily supposed to be connected. But MATLAB defaults to connect to show no markers at all and connect all the points with blue lines. That's not really the look that I want. I think the plot is correct because the data are going to be scattered all over the place. You can see that from the spreadsheet. But I don't think I want to connect them with lines. That doesn't make a lot of sense. So I would like to change this plot so there are no lines at all and maybe black squares where the markers are supposed to be. So I can do that by going over and inside the plot command, pass a plot option to it in single quotes. Normally, if I wanted, say, a dashed line, I would put two dashes here. Or if I wanted a dot, dotted line, I would put a dot here. If I want no lines, I just simply pass it no options here and give it the color that I want, say black, that's K, and then give it the marker style that I want. I think I'm going to use squares here, so I'm going to put S. So what this is going to do is create a plot with no lines in it and just a bunch of little black squares. And this is a nice, what we normally call a scatter plot. And there, is, there are other ways to produce scatter plots in MATLAB, but we can do all these plotting uh, uh, needs here from this one plot command. So this is a pretty good plot. Let's go back and add a few more things to it to make it nice. We have title, NBA attendance versus ticket price. add up at the top, and then label the axes. X label. Uh, this is already shown as in, in tens of thousands, so I don't need to necessarily specify the units here. I'll put attendance, and that is measured in people. And then the Y label is the price, ticket price, and that of course is measured in dollars. <coughs> And it might be helpful, too, to put a grid on this. So I'll just type grid on, throw that up there. And now we have a nice looking plot that shows a little bit of a linear trend with a few outliers, some, uh, some markets that have very low ticket prices, but a lot of attendance, and vice versa. Here's one that has a fairly sort of average attendance, but a very high ticket price. So let's recap what we learned in the screencast. Basically, we learned that the process for plotting data is essentially the same thing as the process for plotting functions. I still have to create a vector for inputs and a vector for outputs, and then call the plot command using whatever options I want. The only difference is I might have to enter in those vectors manually depending on how the data look. Secondly, I can format these data plots, and the right way to do this is by using markers for the data points, and then either no lines whatsoever or very faint dash lines to indicate just connections between the observed data. That's all. Thanks for watching.